Engage my target. With me! Asset is under Bring the asset to the extraction pod. In Rainbow Six Extraction, your mission is to get in, get the job done, and get out. <laughs> But no two missions are quite the same, and in this episode of our Rainbow Six Extraction Deep Dive series, we're taking a look at how different maps and objectives and difficulties combine to create a dizzying array of possibilities. So let's break it down. You're looking at 12 dynamic maps divided into three zones each, 13 different randomized mission types, 18 operators, over two dozen React Tech devices, GAH! This thing, like 10 different types of these things, okay? Plus, all this nasty sprawl, which you know just has to smell awful. And on top of all that, you never know which Archeans are gonna spawn where and where the objective's gonna be. It turns out, actually getting the job done is gonna be a little more complex and a lot more intense. New York City. San Francisco. Alaska. New Mexico, and this absolutely weird place. The maps of extraction are spread out across the whole continent and beyond, with each region more challenging than the one that came before it. The different regions each have their own feel, not just like the touristy flavor of Liberty Island in New York City, compared to the frigid frontier situation of Eurydice Valley in Alaska. I'm talking about the architecture, the kinds of spaces you're fighting in, the different challenges, opportunities, and environmental stories they present. It breaks down like this. Each region has three maps, and each of those maps has three subzones. Every mission sends you off to one map and gives you three objectives, one per subzone. You have the chance to extract after each subzone, which ends the mission and banks all your progress towards leveling up your operators. So, to see an entire map, you'll need to complete your first two objectives and decide to risk it all for the big payout of completing the third and final objective. Each subzone presents progressively more difficult enemies, and the setting can change significantly from one area to the next. Let's look at Eurydice Valley. It's way out there in the Alaskan hinterlands. And the first subzone we encounter on this mission is a straight up farm. I don't know if they're farming in this weather, but the whole place is the site of an ancient meteor crater, which might have something to do with the parasite wanting to set up shop. The farmyard and a large barn dominate this area, creating some big open spaces. In the next subzone, Eurydice Commons, you'll find yourself mostly indoors in what looks to be part hunting lodge, part museum of oddities. The buildings are close here, which means lots of doors and windows and destructible walls to watch. Into the third subzone, titled Missile Silo, it's abundantly clear that this is no humble farming community, as you descend into an underground complex, complete with a bunch of labs, and yes, a missile silo. This variety from zone to zone means you can find yourself in a lot of different combat situations during each mission. Playing the specimen objective, in which you need to lure an elite enemy back to your pad and try not to get mauled in the process, gets trickier when you have a lot of stairs and sprawl to traverse. Capture system. If your mission was, say, serial scan, you'd be more focused on barricading openings near the scan areas and laying traps for your incoming foes so the stairs wouldn't be as much of a factor. How you interact with the map depends on which of the 13 different objectives you're working on, and it's never quite as simple as shoot them all and let Ash sort them out. Take triangulation. Once you activate the first of the three stations, you gotta move to the next one quickly, but operators running down hallways is like catnip to the Archeans, and they play with claws out. It's better to scout your route from station to station before activating them so you can stealthily thin the herd and find pathways that'll allow you to cover ground swiftly. And here's where your power to shape the map through destruction or carefully opening doors or destruction starts to make a real difference. Because if you get turned around while the swarm is nipping at your heels, let's just say you might not be living up to the title of the game on this particular run. 
Scouting the lay of the land is also crucial for decontamination, the objective in which you have to shoot a whole infestation of aberrant nests and then get a sample from the most aberrantest one because Mira has only a tenuous regard for your personal safety. What you'll need to look out for here, and pretty much everywhere else, is the sprawl. This stanky gunk is distributed differently each time you play a given map. So even if you're starting to know your way around San Francisco's Apollo Casino and Resort after a few visits, the sprawl is always creeping somewhere new to mix things up. Plus, if an Archean sounds the alarm and alerts nearby nests, they're gonna start pumping out even more sprawl, which is a bad thing. The sprawl slows you down. The sprawl speeds them up. The effects of spreading sprawl can essentially alter the map mid-mission in favor of the things that want to kill you. Shoot it, melee it, plunge your knife into a big gooey nest and clear out a whole mess of it. You never know who's going to be coming around the corner, and you don't want the sprawl helping them do everything faster. I mean, the Archean archetypes and spawn locations are all shuffled up on every mission. I've played Sabotage and managed to defend my charges with a gaggle of explosive breachers gambling at me on all fours from every which way, but when it's a pack of spikers throwing spikes at me through walls from a lion knows where, I don't know, man. Look, we're going to talk a lot more about the different Archeans and tactics to take them down in another episode of this deep dive series, but suffice to say, when it comes to enemies, you never quite know what you're going to get. And hey, if what you're getting isn't making you break a sweat, or you want to get after those operator skill upgrades and weapon unlocks more quickly, then kicking the difficulty up a notch might be right for you. Completing objectives on tougher difficulties yields substantially more progression, but side effects may include increased sprawl, elevated Archean aggression, grievous bodily harm, and stasis foam encasement. So, ask yourself. Is it worth the extra risk to get those extra rewards? If you want more info on those rewards, check out the other video in our series, where we delve into how different operators can not only change your approach to the mission, but can also evolve as you level up. Rainbow Six Extraction is launching this January for PS4 and PS5, Xbox One and Xbox Series X and S, Cloud Gaming and PC. Subscribe to this channel to catch the next videos in our series and get the latest updates at news.ubisoft.com.